May 8, 1862. Stonewall Jackson defeats the Union Army in McDowell, Virginia. Jackson's army would then pursue the fleeing Union troops north of Franklin, Virginia. These Federal troops would arrive in Franklin to find the telegraph lines cut and would come under attack from Confederate guerrilla fighters hiding in the area caves. While Jackson's 14,000 men closed in on them, citizens caught in the middle would fall victim to both Union revenge and Confederate bushwhacker attacks. In this episode, I stay the week deep in the mountains near Stonewall Jackson's headquarters in West Virginia. You hear him, Squatch? Did you hear anything? The same thing? As I explore the landmarks and people impacted by the Civil War in Jackson's Shenandoah Valley campaign. Spending the week here at this 150 acre farm just south of Franklin, West Virginia. This farm is on the route that the Union Army used to retreat on May 9th, 1862 after the defeat by Stonewall Jackson at the Battle of McDowell. The next day, May 10th, 1862, Jackson would pursue that fleeing Union Army just past this point where several skirmishes would take place. After a few days, Jackson would withdraw from this area so they could continue his Shenandoah Valley campaign. He ended up traveling to the eastern side of the valley to fight in the next battle, Front Royal. A lot of drama would unfold in this valley. Union forces would set up headquarters and consolidate in Franklin. A year prior in 1861, Pendleton County here voted to uphold Virginia's ordinance of secession despite Union sympathies from many of its residents. During the Civil War, the county government and the majority of citizens supported the Confederacy. More than 700 Pendleton soldiers fought for the South, but Unionists in the Seneca and Brushy Run areas of the county contributed several hundred men to home guard companies. The county was divided, which led to vicious guerrilla warfare in these hills, even between brothers in some cases. It wouldn't be until June of 1863 that West Virginia would split from Virginia and officially join the Union. They were the only state to separate from another, but one of two to form during the Civil War, Nevada being the second. I decided to go on a run to see how West Virginians in this area are currently living. All right, so there is a Beware of dog signs, so uh, see if I can make it back through to get back up to the farmhouse without getting bit. Just imagine living out here in these mountains, isolated from the rest of society, and uh, having to make a decision are you with the Union or are you with the Confederacy? Because that could put you at war with the guy right over the hills there. And this was very common during the war. Uh, McDowell, for one, the last battle before they came this way, West Virginia troops went up against Virginia troops and they were even ca uh, calling each other out by their names as they, uh, they shot at each other and attempted to kill each other. These, these were their neighbors, they knew them, but they were enemies. Even Stonewall Jackson himself had to separate himself from his own sister who was a, a Union uh, sympathizer. Well, I survived the dogs. Hello, sir. Beautiful place you have here. This is amazing. Thank you. Does this pass down through your family or? Oh, no. I came out to this place. 33 years ago, but there was an old four, uh, two story farmhouse and it burned down in 2006. I had to build this back. Thank you, thank you. It's not much, but it's home. We're about to get rained on here, brother. Yeah. Who who owns that up there? Is that part of this property? Yeah, it's an absentee landlord. 
Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Have a good one. Thank you. Interesting. Absentee landowner, he says. Definitely an interesting valley to live in. I could get used to uh, staying in a place like this. general store here in West Virginia, the mountains of West Virginia, middle of nowhere. Pulled into Franklin here to get some gas and I was like, man, this looks familiar. And then I thought back to a video I saw about five years ago at this very spot. Alrighty, we're still here in West Virginia, still in the same uh, uh, gas station with... Taya Lewis. Um, how old are you? I'm 19. And you said you didn't like uh, West Virginia. How come? And um, where are you staying? I am currently staying in Sugar Grove. Uh, what, what does that mean? It's like half an hour away from here. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of people here, so, like, you're probably insulting, like, 50% of the people. <laughs> On May 10th, just prior to Union troops reaching Franklin, they stopped here at this valley, and a member of the 32nd Ohio decided to stop and go and wash himself off in the creek down there. So the rest of his unit heard gunshots back here. So they came running back and found him stabbed eight times in the face and lying there dead off the side of the creek. And they determined that it was actually Confederate guerrillas that killed him and were hiding out in the woods and ended up running up into the caves up here to hide. It's like it's just straight up to the caves up here. This cave was used by the Confederates to mine potassium nitrate for gunpowder. DuPont Chemical Company in Wilmington, Delaware only sold to the north, so these saltpeter mines were the primary source of saltpeter for the Confederates. This is currently a private cave reserve owned by the National Speed Lunking Society, so you have to get permission to, to access it. This mine was attacked by federal troops on several occasions. Be careful. These are like steps up here. Confederate guerrillas, also yeah, known as bushwhackers, used these caves to launch attacks. Yeah. The term bushwhacking came into wide use during the Civil War. Prominent bushwhackers include William Quantrill and his Quantrill Raiders. Jesse James, who eventually joined other bushwhackers, the Younger Brothers, to form the James Younger Gang after the Civil War. Clint Eastwood's character, the outlaw Josie Wells, was a bushwhacker. Oh yeah, it's good. Getting back down is going to be the part though. That storm's coming. <laughs> but there's a root right there. I think I can do it. If I can just, this is the sketchiest point right here. I'm going for it. I didn't come this far. You have to make the cave. Cool. So there it is. Trot run cave. 
Trout Rock Cave. The gorillas would have a clear shot of the entire valley down below. Okay, I'm going to get back down off of this thing. I'm gonna put this thing away before that storm hits us there and makes this uh, the whole situation. So, see you at the bottom. There's two more caves up here, but that is the largest opening from what I from what I'm aware of. But I feel the rain hitting right now. You can see it coming through the valley in the background there. So we need to get off this hill. Get up out of here before that trail gets muddy. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to jump it. Whew. Well, the new backpack worked out pretty good. Stay dry. On May 10th, the same day that Jackson decided to pursue the Federals into Franklin here, the Union troops arrived in town and found that the telegraph lines were cut. Now, the citizens knew that this was the Confederates that cut those lines, but the Union troops threatened to burn down all of their houses if any further lines were cut. So Reverend Ambrose, who ran a, Ambrose Meadows, who ran a church here on this location, he was a Union sympathist, so he went into town to try to convince them that this was actually Confederates and not the citizens. So they ended up escorting him back to his house where they were ambushed by Confederate guerrillas. So later that night, a group of Union troops returned to Reverend uh, Meadows' house here, tried to get him to confess to conspiring with the Confederates, but he would not. So they ended up dragging him out of the house, drag, drug his wife, his uh, twin daughters out and his son burned the house down along with all their buildings that were on the farm. They attempted to try to throw Reverend Meadows into that fire. A struggle ensued and they decided just to bayonet Reverend Meadows. They then shot him three times in front of his family. Yeah, I can't really tell if somebody's living there or not. It looks like there is a light on inside, but, but that is the house that's been remodeled. But it was one of Jackson's soldiers that lived there. He happened to live in this area. And uh, Jackson stayed there overnight, set up camp as a, uh, as a headquarters before moving further north towards Franklin. McCoy's Mill. This was the final skirmish between Jackson's troops and Union forces. The Union forces set up several cannon batteries on top of some of these mountains up here and they were hitting this location pretty hard. On well, Sunday, May 12th, Jackson stopped here just south of Franklin with his troops to pray for Sunday service. Halfway through that service, a messenger arrived on horseback and delivered orders telling him to return to the Shenandoah Valley. You hear him squatch? Took a 
of gravel over there. Huh? You hear that? Did you hear it again? Mm -hmm. The same thing. You hear it?